Welcome everybody. This is the Rotary E-Club of Silicon Valley. Every week we bring you a program in which we have connected with some interesting person somewhere on the planet who's going to talk to us about service as service above self is the focus of Rotary International. Our particular club has a special focus, a set of three, uh, on innovation, entrepreneurship, and education. And like I love to say when it happens, uh, we have a program today that kind of touches on all of these things. And uh, I'm excited today to, uh, to introduce our speaker. Before I do, I'll introduce several people we've got on the call. Feel free to wave uh, as, as I call your name. Uh, guest John Funk, a talented teacher in the, in the South Bay and, and also avid traveler. Shags, our, our, our club's paella master and so much more. Uh, Sandy Stabile, uh, who has all kinds of talent and getting, getting involved in cool service activities in our area. And one of our newest members, Nick Lagarde. Uh, Nick, you and your wife are, are wonderful additions to the club, not simply because you know, you're, you're into service, but because you help us do these recordings, which is an awesome thing. And so I'll, I'll shift over to our speaker. Our speaker is Brett Koff. And Brett is a guy I met through, uh, through the educational technology space. I think specifically we met at the Krauss Center for Innovation at one point. Uh, and he is, he is a guy who educators will know something about because they've used the product that his former company uh, launched about eight, nine, ten years ago. He can be more specific, Remind.com. And so that, that wonderful tool has been used by educators all over the world. And, uh, and he's going to tell us a little bit today about what it means when, when you have success in Silicon Valley and how you, how you begin to think about the world as a function of that. So with that, I'd like to hand it over to Brett. Brett, you're on. All right, thanks Rashtin, and it's so nice to meet everyone. Usually if this was face-to-face -face in a crowd, I would wait for you to say, it's nice to meet you too, but I know physically we're not face-to-face, -face, so I'm just gonna start. I have 12 minutes. The title of my talk is for startup number two, how and why I am doing it differently. Uh, in those 12 minutes, there's three sections that I'm gonna go through. The first one is I'm going to give you a little bit of context uh, on my background and the company's background because I think it will help connect the dots. The second thing I'm gonna do is share the values that I have learned and hopefully that you can maybe or maybe not take away from this talk. And then the third one is very specifically tactics. So you can actionably take something away from this talk and choose to either use them in your life or not. Um, so those are the three parts of my talk and I'm gonna start with the first one on context. So my name is Brett Koff. Uh, I'm originally from Skokie, Illinois. And I started an education company called Remind.com, and I heard there was a few teachers, which is wonderful. Thank you. Uh, Remind is a co communication software that connects teachers, students, parents, and more and more schools and districts in a very safe and easy way. I'm going to give you a few quick shock stats, again, in service of uh, connecting context. I started Remind in 2008. Now the media and the press say that it was 2011 and uh, we, pr we pretty much banged our heads against walls for three years, not knowing what we were doing between that time. And in 2011, the company started taking off very fast. I'm currently on the company's board. Uh, I founded it and was the CEO for the first seven or eight years. Uh, we currently have 30 million active teachers, students, and parents, uh, have roughly about 100 full-time employees. More than 70% of teachers in the United States use it. I have personally raised over $50 million in VC funding, which isn't a sign of success, by the way. It's a means to an end, and I'm happy to talk about that. The teachers on our system, the parents, the students send over 15 billion, with a B, billion messages, files, pictures a year in a safe way. Uh, and we've been on everything from the New York Times to the Wall Street Journal and Forbes. So that is the background and context. The reason that I wanted to share that with you is because there was an enormous an enormous amount of emotional experiences and generally experiences in a very short amount of time. I think I was 18 when I started it. Today I'm 32, maybe I was 19. So there's a lot of things that happened and I learned a ton from that. And that's what I wanna share with you quite vulnerably. Um, so there's a lot of great things that I've learned. I'm moving into step two, by the way, now, which is values. There was a lot of great things that I learned from that experience over those last 10 years. Um, but there was also a lot of things that I did not do well and that really hurt me and my family unintentionally. Number one, there was a lot of sacrifice around my emotional health. The second thing, there was immense physical sacrifice. I know that doesn't make sense because I'm coding all day, but I didn't really take care of myself from a physical standpoint um, or an exercise standpoint or the food I put in my body, which now I think is quite important. Uh, and in many cases, I actually sacrificed some of my personal values around family 
uh, which at the time I wasn't conscious enough to even recognize that having family as a personal value was important. And it's a little embarrassing to say that now, but I'd rather just be honest about it. Uh, and I've made an enormous amount of mistakes, which is actually like, I think a good thing because I've learned from them. And the biggest mistakes that I've made, which I'm happy to talk about, while the most painful, I have learned the most from, and I will not make those again. So between those 11 years, a lot of things happened. Um, and you just heard a few of the, the downsides and also the great things that happened in that experience. Around 2018, I decided to step out of day-to-day -day operations. We hired a great CEO and I'm still on the board. And I literally packed up my entire life in San Francisco with my wife and we just traveled for a bit to see the world. And my goal was to be. Now, um, I don't know, <laughs> I have a therapist and sometimes the therapists use the term woo-woo. I don't know how woo-woo people on this call are, but I'm sort of in the middle of that. You know, like if you go to those yoga classes, they say it's important to be and be Zen. I'm in the middle. Um, it is very hard for me to be because I always try to do. Meaning when you start a company, it literally is only you propelling this thing forward all of the time. And I'm sure there's people on this call who are starting something. It doesn't have to be a company that if you don't do it, wake up every morning thinking about it, it's not going to happen. And so I spent a lot of time just being and trying to be okay with being. Literally, what does that mean? I would wake up in the morning and I don't know, I would go for a walk and listen to music and be okay that I wasn't like building the future. That was very difficult for me. Uh, and also in that time, I tried to spend spend some time assessing what matters and why to me. This brings me to the third point of my talk. I think we're doing okay on time. I still have seven minutes. Um, I got a thumbs up from Rushton too. So this is the third point of the talk and, and hopefully the most important that you can take away for your lives or choose not to. Uh, I think the, the biggest point that I, I want you to understand, and I'm going to give a dramatic pause so you remember this part. Okay. Uh, I think it's very important to have a set of principles or value systems in which you choose to live your life by. I'm going to share mine with you. It doesn't mean that mine are right for you. You should choose what yours are. Um, I think that even for me, I was kind of living unconsciously for as a young adult for between 2009 and 2017 or 18. My only goal in life was to make this remind thing work. And in some sense, we did. It's on a very healthy path. Path. But as you saw earlier, there was a lot of things that didn't go well. Uh, so it's really important that you know that I'm not suggesting these specific values are pertinent to you, these things that I care about. Um, but what I would advocate for is that you think about what values are important to you and what type of hard decisions you want to make and trade offs you want to make uh, with those values. So there's three things, and I have them in a very particular order. The first one for me, again, for me, I think I've emphasized that twice because I don't want you to think I'm projecting my personal values on you. Uh, health, physical and emotional is very important to me. Uh, part of that was because I saw my dad pass over a five-year span when I was building the company. Publicly, most people don't know that this was even happening, but he had Parkinson's. Um, and unfortunately, that's a disease that you can't solve or fix. Uh, there's, no, there's no cure for it. But there are a lot of things you can do from a physical health standpoint. And he didn't do those. And I'm not mad at him for that, but he didn't. And I want to make sure that one day when I have a family that I do everything I can to make sure that I'm healthy, both physically and emotionally. And I'm going to specifically go into tactics in a second on what that means for me. The second thing is the relationship I have with my wife. We've been married for two years. We've been together for eight. And, and more broadly, my family. And then the third thing is the current startup I'm working on now, which is called Omella, O-M-E-L-L-A. And there is an order to that, like health, emotional, and physical, my wife and my family, and my startup. Now, some people might be thinking like, oh, why isn't your wife first? Part of my reasoning was that if I am not a healthy person emotionally and physically, I don't think I could be a good partner to her. Um, and they're, they're usually very intertwined, right? Like my health and happiness is very intertwined with my wife's health and happiness. So those are the three things. Uh, if I've ever in my life tried to do more than, the, more than three big things at once, I usually fail, uh, which means I have to make hard decisions that, for things that live outside of that. And I say no a lot to those things. So let's talk about health. And this is the last part of the talk, which is tactics. Um, I work out four or five times a week. I tend to play basketball because I love it. And it, it, it's like my sanctuary. It brings me joy. Um, I eat a lot of vegetables. I know that sounds so funny, but I read a book called How Not to Die, and there was a researcher that uh, literally, literally spent 40 years looking up the top 15 biggest killers in the United States, and one by one explained how eating healthy 
um, and his opinion of what eating healthy is helps with that. Now, I'm not like 100% vegan. I eat meat every now and then, all that stuff. I'm not like extreme about it, but I do care about what I put in my body. And I've seen the outcome of, of what I put in my body. I take walks. I have, I, I was just telling this to a few people on the call before the recording. I have a hundred pound Swiss mountain dog that I love deeply. And before I got her, which was a year ago, I thought, wow, when I'm starting my second company, I'm going to have to spend like, like probably 30 minutes, four times a day walking my dog. I can't like give up two hours in my day. But that space ended up being very healthy for me personally, but also for my company. Little did I know at the time. Uh, we moved to Denver. I live here now um, for a bunch of reasons. But I, I, for me, I was tired of the, the San Francisco. It was quite frenetic. That's the word that I used in my head to describe it. It was very frenetic. And for me, I wanted to change out of this Silicon Valley ecosystem. Um, I've been trying to be more and not do. Uh, that's like a fancy thing to say. I have a very hard time doing it. So like, I don't actually think I'm succeeding very well at that one. And then I have a therapist, which is very helpful because it helps me more deeply understand what I want and don't want and why I make the decisions I do and, and don't make uh, and hopefully become a better, better person and therefore serve those three things better, either this startup that I'm working on or my family or greater society. Um, so that's health. The second one is the relationship with my wife. Again, these are a few tactics. I hope you don't find these boring, but they're important to me. We go on weekly dates every Thursday and I protect them like pretty, pretty well. And if for some reason something comes up, we always try to find a time to reschedule it. Uh, I try to be very emotionally present when we are together so that I'm not like texting on my phone or chatting on Slack with someone. I try to be with her and see her both visually, but also emotionally, if that makes sense. Um, our Saturdays are for us. That's fun days. I usually work six days a week. Uh, today, like, is a work day for me. And now, uh, I enjoy that immensely. I like, I like working. Um, but the decompression in my time with her to do, to to have time for our relationship has been really healthy for me as a person. But also for my new startup, Omela. Like, I think I am a better founder and CEO because of that. Um, I speak very openly and vulnerably with her. For us, there are no secrets, and and that means sometimes maybe hurting her feelings or vice versa. But we have that uh, level of trust. And uh, this is kind of embarrassing to say, but if you would have asked me this in 2009 or 10, I wouldn't have said that my wife at the time, my girlfriend, was the most important thing. I would have said that it is this company. And what I realized, now the company is doing great and we have a, a CEO who's wonderful and it's on a really healthy path, um, but the company's still living and I'm not running it. The world goes on. And um, my relationship with my wife is what will be around in 90 years from now. God willing, no, and that I'll be 130 then or 120, so maybe that's a little bit long. But the relationship with my wife is a second. And then in my last three minutes, uh, I want to share the last one, um, work, which is my startup. For me, starting a company is the most fulfilling thing I can do with my time from a career perspective. I personally get immense joy out of solving a problem, which I think is very important in the world, especially for people who I think are doing very important work. Now, in my last company with Remind, that happened to be teachers. Without going into too much detail for time's sake, um, there was a teacher named Ms. Whitefield in Chicago who totally changed my life. And everyone that I ever speak to always has some teacher or a mentor who, is, who has helped them. And my framework for thinking about that was, well, what if there was 10 Ms. Whitefields? And what can I do with whatever gifts I have and software to help augment them? I think it's a total line of crap that technology is going to like, ooh, my timer's up. I got to go faster. Uh, I, I think, I don't believe that um, the tech, technology will totally revolutionize education. Uh, I tend to think it's relationships. And I think the, the, the use in this case of software is to help make it more efficient. So the company I'm running now, and I'm almost done in 60 seconds, is called Omella, O-M-E-L-L-A. I'm extremely customer focused. I speak to, I spoke to founder customers one-on-one -on -one before writing a line of code. I spend time listening more and talking. Um, we are very focused on building a product quickly and getting it to market and we have a small team. So I'm going to pause um, and open it up to q and I, I hope it was uh, helpful and I think I've hit my 12 minute mark. Great. Awesome stuff. Thank you very much, Brett. Um, actually, as we go into Q&A, let's just start with, uh, tell us a little bit about Omela. Like what, what, is, what is your goal with Omela? Sure. So Omela makes it really easy to collect money from huge groups and the groups can be anywhere from 20 people to a thousand. And it helps specifically a teacher, a coach, a band leader, a PTA, nonprofit, 
a college club um, and you where it might have taken an immense amount of time or work to collect that money with our system it literally takes 30 seconds and two clicks uh, and it's funny that i'm actually talking to this rotary group because two of those 500 customers i had somehow talked to ended up being rotaries uh, and I think there could be a use case there. So later in this q and I would love to ask if you have that problem uh, and if we could potentially help. It's very early. I only have, it's just my brother and I as co-founders and a few engineers, and we just launched it about a week and a half ago. Very cool. Very cool. Well, we, we will make time for that. Uh, so in uh, in the space of getting getting some questions and comments and things like that, let me shift just kind of back to uh, back to the grid view there. Um, who, who will be going first in terms of questions or comments? I, I have a question. Um, uh, I guess I'm going to extend on the, the uh, Omello, uh, Omello, 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 Omello. It's Omella, yeah, O-M-E-L-L-A. Sure to get that right, because uh, I'm sure you're going to run into that. Um, uh, I, I have had clients in the past that have been in that the money exchange space, I, I'll call it, because I don't want to call it payments, because I've had large clients that are in the payment space and small. Um, how does how does uh, Omela? Um, I guess first, what motivated you to start this new company? Uh, uh, and uh, I appreciate uh, and thank you today because I, I learned I appreciated hearing your thoughts and how you've gone to gone through your process. But how did you how did you come to think this is the thing I'm going to start? Yeah, it's a good question. So. Uh, my mission personally from my third bucket, which is my career, is to help people um, be more efficient using software so they can focus on getting back to leading, teaching, coaching, or preaching. When I say preaching, we have pastors and rabbis using our product as well. Um, the why behind how I ended up doing this was because in the last decade of Building Remind, I've literally talked to thousands of teachers and pastors and club leaders and coaches um, because all of them happen to use Remind. And I just observed that this was continually a problem for them. And it's a problem that no one wanted to solve because they thought, well, maybe there's not a market here financially. Um, I believe there is a really big market financially. And before that, uh, I believe that it can actually help them. And so if in some world that we do this video recording again in 10 years, we will have done our job if we take the 20 to 30% of time that a teacher may spend doing logistical work. Payments is just V1 doing logistical work, it could be events, it could be fundraising, it could be document signing, who knows. Um, if we take that 25% and narrow it down to like a percent and we let them get that 24% of their time back to teaching or leading or coaching, we will have done our job. So that is why we, we've built it. And actually to your broader point, there's a lot of people in payments. There are, it is a super involved space, I agree. Um, we're, we're very like, we're, we're very focused on these unique niches I hate to say it, but unfortunately, not many people want to spend time in this payment space helping a teacher or a coach. And that's probably because they don't believe there's a big financial market there. I happen to believe that they need the help. The product can actually help them. And there is a big financial opportunity. Cool. Uh, one for me, Brett. Um, as, as you think about that shift from San Francisco to Denver, like my wife and I moved from the Bay Area to San Antonio, Texas, uh, in part to get like a slower pace of life. Uh, almost two decades ago. Um, what San Antonio is wonderful. Uh, it's just this incredible place, but we ended up moving back in part because we figured out that, that, that our issues were not, they were us, they were not the, uh, not the space we were in, right? Um, and that was part of it. But are you, are you seeing, how long have you been in Denver? Seven, six months. Okay, so in that six months, like what have you seen so far that kind of speaks to you related to like the shift in space? Good question. Well, I mean, the first thing, and this is just personal for me, I live 19 minutes from a mountain that I can go walk on and I tend to like like hiking and being outside. So for me personally, that's really great. The second thing is uh, the valley and especially the, the world I lived in because like I had a startup that had to hire engineers away from Facebook and Google and we raised all this money. Um, it was extremely focused on tech. And now that I'm in you know the middle of the country, it's not. And people have insurance jobs and sales jobs. They are teachers or working nonprofits and uh, rabbis. And, and I really like that. Like I like talking to them because in many cases, they end up being our customer that we can help. 
and and I want to be closer to our customer physically, like literally and hypothetically speaking. I want to understand their problems more. And so, but specifically what I mean by space, it's like, it's just very calm here. Uh, and now I have nothing against the Bay Area. There's actually a, a very likely possibility that sometime in the next five plus years, I'll move back there given like the work that I do, who knows? We're, we're really running this as like a year or two experiment, uh, but it's just very like calm and serene. We also considered places like Chicago or Seattle and um, we just liked it here because there's this calm sense. The other thing, just another point, there's a lot of tech companies moving here. And so if whatever we were building works at some point and we have to hire a lot of people, I think we'll be in a unique position to do that because the market in the Bay Area is, is like extremely difficult to hire at. Okay, um, so I have more of a comment than a question, and um, I would just like to say thank you for sharing with us what your um, action plan has been as far as taking care of yourself. Um, you know, you're eating healthy foods, you're exercising, you have a better, you know, work um, home balance, um, and that, you know, it just, it wasn't easy, and you had struggles, and, but I think it's good for people to hear, especially younger people, that, you know, there are some, you know, things that happen that aren't good, you know, while you're trying to, you know, build this company, so um, I think we forget to take care of ourselves, and um, I know we always say that, you should take care of yourself before you can care for others. So thank you for sharing that with us. Yeah, I appreciate you saying that, Sandy. Um, you know, I, I almost feel like it's a little bit easy for me to do this now. And I'm proud of myself for doing it, but it's a little bit easy. Um, but if, if hopefully the company gets to some type of scale when we have hundreds of employees or, or, or thousands of customers or billions of transactions, then the values will come into question. And that is the purpose of them too. And it actually relates to running a company, by the way, my personal value systems at Remind were very much the company's culture, the same as this will be with my current company, Omela. And so uh, we should check in, in in some amount of time from now, a year, two years, three years, five years, to see if I am still living these. Very cool stuff. Now, um, in, in thinking about this, right, you know, you, you're, you're talking about like Remind was this communication system, Omela is a is is an opportunity to kind of organize, especially around the idea of fundraising. Um, a lot of service clubs are built around the idea of identify good things in the community that, that they can support. Have a fundraiser, typically one that's kind of fun for them, you know, like a crab feed or or you know whatever it may be, uh, and and then to to get together and decide what to do with that money so that it can help others. Um, can you be like yet more specific about about what that can be for a service club like like what what is omela doing that that allows that to happen for a service club and and also i'll add that just understanding that people in a service club are, are really trying to work out a certain kind of balance in life you know i mean th this may take some of the the pain out of being or, or the difficult parts out of being in a service club you know hopefully we'll see great question Everything, 500 conversations with different customer profiles, teachers, coaches, Rotarians, et cetera, all comes down to pretty much one problem we want to solve, which is saving the organizer, which is a, a Rotarian or, or a nonprofit collecting money, saving them time and making their lives more efficient. We are extremely focused on doing that. And so tactically, like what that actually means is if you have to, if you're having a crab dinner, I think you said, and there's 50 people coming to that crab dinner, um, in quite literally 30 seconds, you could say, I'm collecting money for a crab dinner. It's 30 bucks, 50 bucks, a thousand bucks, whatever the number is. We actually don't allow that, that yet, that, that price. Um, and that would be a very expensive crab dinner. That would have to be like Alaskan king crab. And you, that's it. Like, we give you a link and you could share it however you want. And then people pay in a bunch of different ways with Apple Pay, uh, Google Pay. They could just click credit card, debit card. We accept everyone in the United States, nearly everyone. And then we give the organizer all of the things that they need to track it in one place. Just so just, just as an example, usually the person collect money has to have a spreadsheet that's 50 rows long that has all these dates and timestamps. Or there's teachers that literally have manila envelopes in their classrooms that the kids will walk up to, put a check in there if they remember to put it in because they're like 10. Um, and so it, for parents to be able to just easily, easily pay that way. And so everything is built around time and making the organizer's life 
uh, more efficient. Now I should say we only rolled this out like a week or two ago and thankfully, you know, we've had thousands of dollars in transactions with college clubs, with um, rabbis, pastors, teachers, but it's very early. And, and for anyone who is starting a company, I care more about learning and learning right now and the process versus the outcome. Does that make sense? I care more about learning. So uh, to every organizer, so you cannot publicly sign up for Omela right now. You're welcome to go to the wait list or you could just email me and I would love to talk to you. But like I have to talk to every single organizer who wants to use our system because I truly want to understand their problem first. And then when we onboard our, our organizers, I video do this with them. I actually have a video recording and, and listen to them so I understand their problems. And I'm texting with them. I'm getting their feedback. And then the nice thing is once their feedback comes, I'm rapidly iterating on that feedback and we'll build it into the product to help them more. Does that make sense? It does. It sounds like a, a particularly good uh, application of design thinking principles to, to, to building, you know, like what you're doing. So it's very, very cool. All right. Well, uh, to all of the people who have been a part of, of our, uh, our recording and to all of you who will watch this as the program for our, our weekly meeting, thank you for spending time with us. You know, it, it's always our goal to, uh, to find the kind of stories that, that inspire us to see the world in new ways, to find ways to serve others uh, in ways that we might not have imagined before. And uh, we're glad that you help us make that happen. Uh, there are several things that we ask you to do. Uh, one is that let us know you were here. There's, a, there's a, an attendance form, and if you type in your email address correctly, your, your club secretary, uh, you, you can get an email saying that you were part of it, and you can pass that along to your club secretary for a makeup if you're a member of another Rotary Club. There is a discuss, D-I-S-Q-U-S, uh, section at the bottom of this page, which allows you to ask questions, ask questions related to the program, to other pieces of our meeting that may have intrigued you in some fashion. Let us know, respond what other people have put in that section. We, we like having that kind of conversation as a part of it. And then to all of our members and guests as well, if you know some really cool, interesting thing happening out there, connect us with that person so we can uh, get them to talk to us and, and record a program that we can share with our members and guests. So all of those things are important to us. Uh, we always finish by passing it back to the speaker for, for a final comment, and we'll do the same now. Brett, what, uh, what can you finish us off with? Well, because I gave you the dramatic pause earlier, if you didn't remember what that dramatic pause was for, I think it's important to think about having a value system or an intentional philosophy in how you want to live life and make decisions. And my specific values probably aren't right for you, and that's okay. But having a value system in which you make decisions is really important and has personally helped me a lot. And thank you for having me.